In this, the final lecture of our Cold War series, we are going to talk about the challenges to Soviet control, especially in Eastern Europe, and ultimately the, the end of the Cold War and the fall of the Soviet Union. We're going to start talking in uh, Eastern Europe with uh, the immediate post-war years, where the Eastern European nations of Hungary and Czechoslovakia and Poland and East Germany and Romania and Bulgaria would all fund, uh, fall under the, the Soviet sphere or Soviet influence. Uh, each one of these places uh, would have established uh, communist dictatorships dependent on the Soviet Union. Each would be moved to nationalize their private enterprises. Each would collectivize their agriculture. Each would have their uh, economies integrated with that of the Soviet Union, and each uh, were had their policies supported by Soviet controls and censorship, suppression of religious freedoms, and the presence, uh, most importantly, of Soviet troops throughout this Eastern Bloc. Not everybody played this game, though. Yugoslavia, for example, led by Joseph Broz Tito in the post-war years, was um, led by its own communist leader that never needed the Soviet Union to liberate um, his country. Uh, in fact, Joseph Tito and his, his partisans waged an internal uh, war against Germany, and ultimately it was they themselves that liberated Yugoslavia from, from the Germans. So the Soviet Union never had their army inside Yugoslavia, and without that army there, it's going to be lacking the influence that it would have on all of the other Eastern Bloc nations. So Joseph Broz Tito certainly saw himself as independent of the Soviet Union, not as a part of the Soviet sphere, and not wanting to be controlled by the Soviet Union. By 1948, that relationship between the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia would officially end uh, with, with what is known as the, uh, the Stalin-Tito split, or the Soviet-Yugoslavian split, um, and Stalin would follow that by purging uh, who he considered Titoists in other Eastern European satellite nations. Individuals who might have been communist, uh, but maybe didn't want to follow in close line with the, the Soviet Union's leadership. In 1953, in East Germany, uh, there would be a workers' revolt over high production targets that were dictated ultimately by the Soviet Union. Uh, this is in the summer of 1953 and June of 1953. These would be the first mass protests within the Soviet sphere, and this obviously concerned the Soviet Union that if that if these protests were not suppressed and if they would spread to other Eastern European nations, um, this could be a threat to the Soviet sphere. So this uprising would be quickly suppressed by the Red Army. Remember, the Soviet Army is scattered throughout the Eastern Bloc nations. In 1956, uh, the Soviet Union will have a new leader, in 1955 actually, uh, and in 1956 Nikita Khrushchev will deliver what's known as the secret speech, uh, his speech to the Communist Party in Moscow, where he will move to, to bring an end to Joseph Stalin's cult of personality. Uh, his hope was to, to end the culture of fear that had existed under Joseph Stalin in the Soviet Union, but a, an unintended consequence will be those in Eastern Europe and also in China are going to look upon the Soviet Union a little bit differently. In Eastern Europe particularly, um, this was seen as an opportunity for Eastern European nations to possibly stretch their legs and, and go their own way with communism as well. Um, in June of 1956, there would be a Polish workers' revolt um, that was res uh, resulted in a political compromise between the Soviet Union and Poland, and then a series of riots in 1956 um, following the replacement of a Stalinist leader in Hungary uh, with a more moderate one with hopes of becoming maybe a more neutral state. Uh, the Red Army moved in and, and crushed this uprising in Hungary in 1956. In 1968, we're going to see a further challenge to the Soviet authority, and now with the, uh, under the leadership of Leonid Brezhnev, um, and this comes out of Prague, Czechoslovakia, in an event known as the Prague Spring. Dissatisfaction with the repressive Czechoslovakian regime came to a head at this event, which would ultimately be known as the Prague Spring, as a new leader named Alexander Dubček promised reform and modernization and liberalism. Well, this is certainly something that the Soviet Union couldn't have happening in Czechoslovakia and possibly spreading to other nations. So in August 1968, Soviet Union and Warsaw Pact troops would move into Czechoslovakia and install a new Soviet-led government. 
Uh, this action would, would lay out what becomes known as the Brezhnev Doctrine, that communist parties are not just responsible for their own people, but for all socialist countries. And therefore, this collective action against any threat would be justified. This is going to be hugely damaging to, to the socialist movement because obviously not all communists, not all socialists um, are in support of, of Soviet action. In 1980, in Poland, a dock workers strike in the city of in the northern city of Gdansk um, will result in the Polish government hoping to avoid uh, an invasion by the Soviet Red Army will declare martial law um, across Poland and ban uh, this this striking uh, party known as the Solidarity Party. Another challenge to the Soviet Union, now outside of Eastern Europe, is going to be the 1979 Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. This is uh, seen uh, as an example of the Brezhnev Doctrine in action, as the Soviet Union claimed to be moving into its neighboring Afghanistan in order to support the communist government in Afghanistan that was under threat. Afghan leadership um, looked towards the CIA um, for, for help um, against uh, these, the, the Soviet Union as it came in, and the, Soviet, and the CIA uh, through Pakistan did support uh, weapons to move in to these Afghan rebels. The Soviets moved into Afghanistan uh, with, in hopes of not having Afghanistan's government fall and be replaced by something like was seen in, uh, in Iran in 1979, and they also did not want American presence in the region. The result of this would be the United States uh, issuing what's known as the Carter Doctrine, pledging United States interaction if the Soviets threatened the Persian Gulf, because Afghanistan's getting a little bit closer to important front uh, allies in the Persian Gulf area. And also, um, we helped support the uh, Islamic Mujahideen fighters who were waging war against the Soviet Union. This aid would increase during Ronald Reagan's administration. This invasion of Afghanistan was hugely costly to the Soviets, who would ultimately pull out in 1988 as then leader of the Soviet Union, Mikhail Gorbachev, saw the money more useful uh, to be spent on the domestic front. And that brings us to, to discussion about Mikhail Gorbachev and ultimately the end of the Cold War. Uh, we definitely have to recognize the impact of Gorbachev on uh, bringing a, a peaceful end to the Cold War. Gorbachev recognized that the government uh, spending that the Soviet Union was doing on its military could not continue. Um, in addition to cutting back military spending and ultimately pulling out of Afghanistan, Mike, Mikhail Gorbachev would offer two key reforms uh, to the Soviet people in uh, the name of Perestroika and Glasnost. Perestroika is a restructuring of the economy which would lead to uh, less command economic principles and more free market opportunities for Soviet citizens. And then Glasnost, uh, that the government should be open to more public scrutiny and there should be more general political openness. This would also lead to, to some free elections throughout the Soviet Union. Gorbachev also recognized that the Soviet Union could not keep up with the arms race, uh, in particular with the United States and Ronald Reagan pushing towards developing of the Strategic Defense Initiative, the Star Wars plan. Um, the Soviet Union could not meet the uh, Soviet, meet the American spending on, on military. So he saw negotiations with the United States um, as more beneficial than attempting to match production. Also in 1986, there was a disaster at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in present-day Ukraine that emphasized Gorbachev's stance on the danger and the threat of nuclear weapons. Mikhail Gorbachev and President Ronald Reagan would meet in a series of four summits from 1985 to 1988, um, most of the discussion being over the, uh, the limiting of nuclear weapons and arms controls. Uh, by 1988, after this series of meetings, Ronald Reagan would publicly proclaim that the Soviet Union was no longer the evil empire that he had once referred to them as. Also in 1988, the Soviet Union will withdraw from Afghanistan, um, and it really looks like we're seeing a beginning to the end of, of the Cold War. The role of Ronald Reagan should not be diminished, um, although there are some differences in how, how People view Reagan's importance into the end of the Cold War. Some will point out that it, it's Reagan and his hardline stance against the Soviet Union in the early 1980s that would ultimately lead a leader like Mikhail Gorbachev to back down and not attempt to continue to keep up. Um, but this, this Reagan, Reagan ultimately being able to work with Mikhail Gorbachev uh, in his second term um, is credited by many as being a crucial uh, component to the ultimate end of the Cold War.
Some long-term factors that should be discussed with regard to ending the Cold War um, are, are the massive spending that the Soviet Union was doing on military and foreign policy, um, and they still could not keep pace with the Americans. Uh, there was a lack of spending on consumer goods in the Soviet Union, and the domestic economy in the Soviet Union in the 1980s was in shambles. Industrial output was declining and morale was low. Uh, the, some will argue that, that the detente period was actually a success and it allowed the Soviet Union to continue on with some poor economic principles that would ultimately lead to a collapse of, of their economy. Finally, um, in discussing about the, the end of the Cold War, we, we need to talk about the Eastern European nations that are going to um, be breaking from the Soviet sphere. Um, in Poland in 1988, the Polish government uh, made the Solidarity Party a legal political party and reformers would be introduced. And um, by 1989, when that political party was allowed to run for free elections in Poland, um, the Solidarity Party overwhelmingly uh, won in their elections. Again, this is something that was attempted in other Eastern European nations in earlier decades, and they were suppressed by the Soviet Union. Now, under Gorbachev, he's letting them go. In East Germany, uh, with living standards far below those of the West, um, and some East Germans still continuing to try to escape into the West, uh, Gorbachev finally made it clear that he would not intervene um, in, in protests or any East German push to move closer to the West. Um, these protests would grow, and ultimately um, the Berlin Wall would fall in 1989, Free elections would be held in 1990 um, for uh, the opportunity to reunify the nation, and overwhelmingly, reunification won the day, and East and West Germany would be officially reunified in October of 1990. Hungary in 1990 offers its own reforms uh, in free elections. Uh, Czechoslovakia will have what's known as the Velvet Revolution, with little violence and the, the election of a reform dissident-minded leader named Václav Havel to become the new president. Uh, and again, the Soviet Union does not intervene. Um, in Romania as well, um, there's uh, far more violent uh, movements against the, the communist government in Roma Romania than in any other uh, Eastern European nation, but ultimately the communist government under Nicolae Ceausescu would fall as well. The end of the Soviet Union is going to come um, not from necessarily the, the breakoff of all these uh, Soviet satellite states, but from the breakoff of states within the Soviet Union. Um, Eastern European events um, and the freedom of Eastern European nations is going to lead to uh, former East European states that are now members of the Soviet Union, like Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, uh, to call for their own independence. Uh, and during 1991, the 14 republics of the Soviet Union began to chip off from, from the Soviet Union. On December 25th, 1991, under pressure from internal uh, strife, especially with regard to the, uh, the collapsing Soviet economy, Mikhail Gorbachev would resign as leader of the Soviet Union and the Soviet Union would officially be over. The immediate impacts to, to this are going to be a, a crisis for communism around the world, especially in Cuba, who relied on aid from the Soviet Union. Um, also, North Korea, China, and Vietnam will suffer uh, dra uh, dramatic economic downturns because of the ending of aid from, from the Soviet Union, and many of those countries would move to offer their own reforms in the absence of Soviet aid. And there you have it, the end of the Cold War.